one big ass keyboard and why is it so expensive i'm rio gian and welcome to the channel right off the bat if you're lacking desk space then click away right now because this is definitely not the keyboard for you this is the best definition of a plus size keyboard with the bank of macro keys, dedicated media controls, a profile switcher. I mean the only thing that's really missing here is the volume scroll wheel. I believe the layout is standard which is nice but the question is, are there aftermarket support for membrane keyboards? This is something that I would like to know about in the comments down below. There is the built-in wrist rest which is hard plastic so it isn't great for long duration but it's really up to the user so your mileage may vary. The font is actually more on the professional side which is nice, although I wouldn't imagine bringing this keyboard to work just because of how large the thing is. You will definitely turn heads in the office but it's more like odd stares than stares of admiration unless you got some kind of keyboard junkie working with you. There are these side bits which take up space and I know it's there for style, which is cool for those that love it but terrible for those that want a more minimalistic keyboard. Then again, to be honest, if you're looking for a minimalistic keyboard then why the hell are you here? This is a membrane keyboard so in terms of switch life I think it's probably around 10 million keystrokes. Comment down below if you think I'm wrong and it boils down to how long you planning on using your keyboard. If you want something that will last forever to be honest this kind of money can easily get you a mechanical keyboard. I think this keyboard is for someone that's a bit more on the sort of expressive side where you want something that's different for the sake of being different. This is the kind of like hipster keyboard, so humor me here. This is the kind of stuff that you pay large money for and it's not worth it. You and I both know this is not worth it, but there's a market for something like this, which is why it sells. I do think there are kind of people that would spend this kind of money for something like this. I guess you can say this is a CoStar stabilizer. There are metal wires but you do see plastic pieces, rather it's one of those things where the slots for the wires are stuck to the keycap so this is something that's next to impossible to find keycaps replacement for. I don't like these kind of proprietary keycaps because it's really dumb if you need to replace something but if you spend this kind of money then I guess you wouldn't care. This. It's the typical thin ABS caps that comes with most mainstream keyboards. Then again, this is a membrane keyboard so it makes me question, is it possible to put PBT caps with membrane stem? I don't know. I would like to see something like that though. At a closer look I think this is one of those prints where it would rub off easily if you use the keyboard over time. If this is true then, this is really bad for something this pricey. The flip up feet does have rubber on them so it will keep the board planted at both angles. There are cable management slots but not for keyboard cable, I think it's probably geared towards headphone, mouse or something else. Besides that there isn't really that much to talk about for the back, the keyboard is actually pretty light which makes sense it's a membrane keyboard. The cable is rubber and the USB tip is silver so either you like this or you don't. To be honest I think this is where the money's at. The software is pretty decent, it hasn't had too many errors as it did before which is really nice. The software is user friendly enough so that you can pretty much do what you want without looking up guides which is nice. I think this is annoying even though you have auto apply. The software would go away if you hit OK and then you would have to bring the software back up. An interesting feature is that you have these typing sound. This can either be really nice or really 
really freaking annoying depending on who you are. My favorite is sci-fi sound. I would set this, I would turn on max volume and just really annoy the hell out of people. It's awesome, but you can't trick it. So let's say if you want the sound, but you don't want to type on this particular keyboard, that ain't gonna happen. You're gonna have to type on that particular board. If not, no sound will come out. So besides this, another selling point is the force buttons. Q, W, E, A, S, D. These buttons are like analog sticks. So like the harder you press them, the more they go, which is kind of interesting, but I don't know how useful this is besides racing games. But then again, why would you play racing games with a keyboard? Let me know in the comments. For a membrane keyboard, this does feel pretty good. The travels are quite smooth. It's tactile enough to the point where I can feel that I push the keys. I love typing on this keyboard, but only with the software on. Here's what the keyboard sounds like. For around $70 to $90, this is a fun toy, but just know that there are much better mechanical options for that kind of money. If you are indeed a hipster and you want something different, this might be the keyboard you're looking for. If you want to annoy the hell out of the people, I would say buy this keyboard. Use it for one day to see how many people you piss off and then return it. If you're not a fan of gimmicks and you actually want a keyboard that's worth the money, stay the hell away from this keyboard. If you want a keyboard with a few analog keys, then this is probably the one to go with. But I'm thinking you might find better options if you just keep looking. Before I let you guys go, I have to say this was a fun keyboard while it lasted. Anyway, subscribe, the bell, more content. You guys stay awesome now.